Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the thumb. Uh, pretty nice day today, so I decided to go ahead and uh, clean out my boiler. Um, it's been a couple weeks. I should have done it a week ago, but it's been kind of nasty weather, and I don't like doing it when it's windy. Um, had a bad experience with that one. So. Um, I guess I'm going to start out with uh, some of the tools I use. Um, um, yeah, so the so I got like a this is just a normal uh, hoe. Um, just use that for kind of scraping out the bottom, the ashes out of the bottom. Got a uh, flat shovel. Use that for most of the getting the ashes out. Use this big scoop shovel. You'll see what I use that for in the back. And then this is just a just a piece of one inch angle iron that I kind of sharpened up one end a little bit. It just helps. You'll see what I use that for too, but it's just a one inch angle iron. Happens to be stainless, but it probably doesn't really have to be. Um, and then this is a, it's like a grill brush. Um, I, it kind of works. I'm hoping someday it'll kind of get broke in and work a little better. Um, then later I got this, uh, it's just like a three inch scraper that I use for scraping the doorway and stuff like that or, or, and stuff. And of course I use the, the tools that came with the boiler. Um, so that being said, um, I guess what I'll do first is uh, go ahead and shut it off. It was, uh, it's probably pretty well out of wood. It's Sunday morning and I didn't get out here probably when I should have. Um, but yeah, what it is, it's Central Boiler Classic Edge 750. Um, yeah, it's not the newest version of the Classic Edge, but uh, still works pretty good. So I can see what I'm doing. Get that down there so you guys can see. So yeah, it's kind of nice because all of this uh, ash, as long as you do your daily maintenance pretty good, all the ash kind of falls down in there. Um, yeah, like I said, it's probably a little fuller than it should be. I've been putting it off, procrastinating. I'm going to move this just a little. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going with the flat shovel first. Um, this ash can, it's of course a steel ash can. I usually, uh, I just emptied it this morning from the last time. I usually leave the ashes in the can. That way, all the hot embers that are in there have a chance to cool off. There might be some remnants of paper in here. I, uh, I burned some. Actually, they rolled tax papers, and I was kind of surprised how long they took to burn. They they charcoal out just like the wood does in here. Probably got a lot of BTUs out of them. Yeah, I just I get as much as I can out of the front here, but I don't. Uh, and it doesn't really pay to really reach or try to pull any out from the front. Okay, so that's about all I can get out of the front. Now I'm going to move around to the back. Yes, definitely waited too long.
Okay, so here's where the big scoop shovel comes in. I'll just kind of jam that in there. You can use it kind of as a, say like a dustpan. Not absolutely necessary, but it saves a little time in the room then. Okay, got it all cleaned out. Now I'm going to just load it back up for the day. First I'm going to turn it on. So that's basically what it looks like. Let me turn the light on. Yeah, it's uh, I said I got out here a little later than I normally do, so it's usually got a little better coal bed on it. But when it's like this, I usually turn the ignition and everything. Oh, yeah, kind of jump starts all the embers up in there.
So I don't know if you noticed or not, but when I uh, when I was messing with those ashes, the last thing I did was just kind of cleaned out the hole on the bottom where where all the gas and smoke and everything exits out the bottom of the stove, just to open it up so that so it has good air flow. So just so you know. Started out with uh, like smaller uh, smaller stuff on the bottom just so it gets, I mean that's common sense when it comes to building fire, you put smaller stuff on the bottom. Okay, I think I pointed it out on one of my other videos, but the last thing I do when I'm putting wood in, you know, today's a pretty nice day, so normally I'd probably put, I don't know, half again as much wood in there if it was you know, a normal winter day, but it's kind of a sort of a spring day today, so. Um, but anyway, the last thing I do is uh, put a couple of pieces of wood crossways along the threshold of the door, because all that creosote gets liquefied and it'll come out and it drips down. And if you don't do this, well then it drips down and then it kind of runs in with all the air chambers and stuff. So it's a good idea to do that. Um, kind of learned it the hard way or took me a few years to figure that one out. Um, but it, it doesn't make it run more efficiently that way. And then the other thing I do too is uh, run the wood you know, parallel to the door. Um, it gives it a few inches on each side of the pile of wood gives it good airflow, lets it lets it cook good. Um, and then I think it kind of bridges over a little better so it has more airflow going down through the bottom of the stove too. So I don't know. Everybody probably has their own opinion on that, but that's the way it works for me, so I'm happy with it. Um, I guess that's about it for those things. I'm gonna leave the bypass open for a little bit. And I'll kind of show you what's going on over there. Let's see if I can get this off here without breaking anything. So, yeah, the temperature got down quite a ways because of the. Uh, but yeah, so this uh, this is the primary. Um, basically, that's just telling you that the primary, I don't know what you call it, actuator or whatever, is open. Um, if you were to look on the computer, it would show you how far it's open and all that stuff too. But um, and this is the secondary one. Like basically, this is running half throttle um, when it's got the clear uh, LED in it. Um, I guess I can close this. That'll tell me how actually how hot the secondary is. Yeah. So the secondary is only running 602. I think I think the secondary comes on when it gets to. Uh, it's 550 degrees. Um, yeah, usually when I close this bypass door, it drops a little bit. And yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of coals in there either, so yeah, it's going back up now. Um, but yeah, I, I've said it before, but I really like this fire starter because it, it really gives you a just remote access to it. Um, I think technically you can change settings and stuff remotely, but I never on that um, but what I like about it is uh, all if you sometimes you get in a hurry and you just throw a bunch of wood in and you want to check it an hour later um, you can you know you can see make sure it's actually burning and usually it is and then uh, once in a while I'll you know forget to I'll forget whether I closed this bypass door or not and I can just log on from wherever I'm at to see if I did 
And then in the middle of the night, you know, on real cold nights, sometimes, if it's really cold, sometimes I have to go out and uh, throw wood in. But I can just check this and check the burn time, see how long it's been burning. Okay, see how this temperature here is getting up to 100 or 716, I think it was. Um, that, this secondary one will kick in, it'll turn red at 750. Yeah, if there was more poles in there, that would already be on the red. But when I throw, yeah, oh boy, it's just about there. It'll turn before it clicks open again. See, there it is. So now the secondary is running full blast. So yeah, that's the ins and outs of uh, cleaning my cleaning my classic edge. Um, so yeah, I guess if you like this video, like it, share it with your friends subscribe, do all that other good stuff, um, and I really appreciate you watching, and uh, tune in again next time. Take her easy.